from Washington, this is VOA News. At least three killed in a Mogadishu bomb blast. The, the Obama administration says Egyptian authorities should release President Mohamed Morsi. I'm Vincent Bruce reporting from Washington. At least three people are reported killed after a blast by a suicide bomber in the Somalia capital of Mogadishu. Witnesses say the bomber detonated explosives, destroying a group of roadside shops near a convoy of African Union troops, killing himself, the civilians, and narrowly missing the AU convoy. Rebels from the al-Qaeda-linked al-Shabaab group claimed responsibility. In Kirkuk, Iraq, a bomb blast went off in a cafe, killing at least 18 and wounding another 26 late Friday. It's not known if the attack was by a suicide bomber, and no one has claimed responsibility. The Obama administration Friday called on Egyptian authorities to release deposed President Mohamed Morsi from detention. At a press conference Friday, U.S. State Department spokeswoman Jen Psaki would not say the United States no longer considers Morsi to be Egypt's ruler. She said that senior U.S. officials are already meeting with interim president Adli Mansour. Moving forward with an inclusive process is what we would like to see. And while well, yes, we of course recognize uh, that uh, that Morsi was uh, President Morsi was democratically elected. Uh, the question, uh, this is more, and I've, so I've said this before, as have many other officials, it's about more than what happens at the ballot box. Saki said the United States is still evaluating events in Egypt to determine whether President Morsi's ouster was a coup, an important legal distinction that would affect more than $1 billion of U.S. assistance to Egypt. More details at voanews.com. Tens of thousands of supporters of ousted Egyptian President Morsi rallied in Cairo on Friday, keeping up what they say will be their nonstop demand for his reinstatement. The White House says it continues to work to address concerns U.S. lawmakers have about President Barack Obama's decision announced in June to send lethal aid to Syrian rebel forces. The OA senior White House correspondent Dan Robinson has a report. Worries in Congress about President Obama's plan to send lethal aid, reportedly small arms and ammunition, to the Free Syrian Army emerged in reports by the Washington Post and other media. The White House announced the aid decision in June after the U.S. determined that the regime of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad used chemical weapons on a small scale against the opposition on several occasions last year. Press Secretary Jay Carney declined to discuss specifics regarding aid shipments or timelines, but appeared to provide some indication of the message the administration is likely communicating to Capitol Hill. We have, with our allies and partners, uh, worked to uh, strengthen the elements of the Syrian opposition that uh, have, in our view, the best interests of the Syrian people in mind. Dan Robinson, VOA News, the White House. At least seven people are believed dead in France after a train carrying hundreds of passengers derailed at a station south of Paris. The train veered off track Friday and crashed into the platform at Brecht-Nice-Ours station, about 20 kilometers south of the French capital. It had been traveling from Paris to the city of Limoges. Dozens of people were reported injured in the crash, which caused some of the train's cars to topple over. An investigation into the cause of the accident is underway. Pakistani teen activist Malala Yousafzai has celebrated her 16th birthday by pledging her support for the U.N. Secretary General's initiative to get all children, especially girls, into school by 2015. Yousafzai was shot in the head on her way home from school by Taliban gunmen nine months ago. She was targeted because she spoke out for the right of girls to go to school in Pakistan. U.S. Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano is resigning from the federal government to head the University of California system. Napolitano announced in a statement Friday that she's being nominated 
as the university system's next president. Former U.S. intelligence contractor Edward Snowden met Friday with human rights activists and Russian lawyers at a Moscow airport. The deputy director of Human Rights Watch in Moscow, Tanya Lokshina, was among those who met with Snowden. She says that Snowden now wants asylum from Russia. He said that he would immediately ask for an asylum here in Russia. He would file his official claim. Later, the secret disclosing group WikiLeaks posted a statement from Snowden saying he wanted to stay in Russia until he could safely go to Latin America. And two Boeing Dreamliner airplanes have run into difficulty in England. One that caught fire, that was an Ethiopian Airlines Boeing 787. Another had technical trouble, Thompson Airways. I'm Vincent Bruce, VOA News, reporting from Washington.